Hello, Facebook Live. It's Terry Talks on Thursday. I'm excited to be here. Saying hello to my replayers. I'm Terry Gilbert. Thanks for joining. Today we're going to talk about being all in, being an all in player. So many people today, I'm 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 really I'm preaching to myself because it's it's easy to want to retract. It's easy to not commit. It's easy to keep one foot in and one foot out. And so I'm going to give some examples today and then we're going to talk about why people do that. Why do we not commit? Why do we um, to put just a little part of us in instead of our whole self in? And I want you to really think about it. You don't have to commit to everything. Okay, that's not what we're talking about here. But what you do commit to, you want to be all in. So I'm going to say it again, don't commit to everything, but what you do commit to be all in. So much of my teaching is about moving forward, about increase. If you feel stuck or you feel like there's blockage in an area, oftentimes it's because you're not fully committed. And when you're not fully committed, you're, you're easily distracted. You, you just cannot move forward because on a bad day, you withdraw. Or sometimes you don't just withdraw, like for a day or two, you just leave the scene completely. And I'll give you a perfect example. I think that's really why a lot of divorces happen. Because when things get tough, instead of doing the work to move through, God is a builder. God is a grower. God does not, um, life with, life is difficult. Everyone, everyone, I don't have to be the one to tell you that life is difficult. It's not what happens to you or it's how you walk through it, how you grow from it. So if you're not all in, if you don't make a conscious decision to be all in, which is commitment, if you're not committed to your marriage, you're going to walk away from it. Or you're going to, even if you don't physically walk away, you walk away mentally, emotionally, just, you just kind of retreat from it. And it's okay to do that for seasons, to work things out. We're not talking about ebb and flow of daily life. We're talking about um, like leaving the scene completely. Or let's take a job because this works in all areas. And we're talking about um, whatever you're committing to being fully committed. So don't commit to everything, but what you commit to be fully committed or all in. So let's just take, um, we talked about marriage. Okay, if you're not fully committed to marriage, there's going to be days that you are going to want to leave. And you have the mindset of leaving. You maybe physically do, and eventually, as a man think it, so shall he be. Okay, what about being all in at the office? What about if there's things that agitate you at work? Because we all have that. Okay, what about there's things at work and you just don't have that fully committed? You know, the word tell us, tells us to do everything we do, everything we put our hand to do with all our might. We are to be people of excellence. If you do, if you're playing 80% all the time, then that's not all in. All in means I'm going to give it my all no matter what the situation is around me. I'm going to give it my all no matter what the outcome. It's not like I'm giving my all because it's I'm going to give it my all because I'm a person of excellence because I'm committed. So whatever you commit to, give it your all. And the reason why is because when you give it your all, it starts a momentum. It starts an elevation. It starts a, um, an increase. So let's talk about how does giving it your all and working out. I, I need to raise my hand on this because I'll go to the gym often. And just the fact that I showed up at the gym, um, I count that as, okay, that, that counts. It doesn't count, okay? It doesn't count if I just go there and do 10%. That is not the right mindset. It counts when you go and you give it your all. Whatever you put your hand to, give it your all. Do with all your might. What about your relationship with the Lord? Okay, how about that? And what about if you just get up in the morning and you do the checklist of, okay, I read my, my devotional. I'm not, I'm not knocking devotionals. I'm saying all these things are a heart check. Okay, every one of these we're talking about is a heart check. Because you know in your heart, am I giving what I've committed to my all? And this is the reason Lisa Turkhurst, Turkhurst wrote a great book called Say No So That You Can Have Your Best Yes. So I'm not saying commit to a lot of stuff. In fact, I'm telling you don't commit to a lot of stuff. But what you commit to, give it your all. Because you will be a happier person. You will be a more successful person. But most important, it starts a momentum in your life that just it elevates your joy. It makes you feel more confident in yourself. Because whatever you do and you keep doing and you repeat 
whatever you do like that on a continuum, you get better, you get more confident. It starts that momentum going. Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, what keeps us from giving our all. What is it that, what is it inside of us? What is that resistance about? Okay. Why do people not give their all to their marriage or to their job even or to, to a relationship or whatever it is or even working out? Why do we not give our all? The number one reason, which is almost always reasons for when you, when you don't show up for your full self, is fear. Okay, if I give all to my marriage, I'm going to get hurt. Or my, and let's just even relationship. I give all to this relationship, you know, and you've got your eyes watching what they do. Then what if you give all and they give nothing? You know, then it's imbalanced. There might be a day you have to address that. I'm not saying don't have a voice. I'm not saying don't discuss things. I'm saying that don't gauge your life on what somebody else's does. Don't gauge your life or your actions on another person's. Because this is what the Lord told me one time. I love this. Okay, this is going to help somebody. I was kind of complaining under my breath about my husband. Was kind of, kind of, and he says, when you stand before me, he will not be there. It's me and you. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Okay, so my point is, it's not about them. It's not about your, your boss at work. It's not about your friend that doesn't act right. It's not about your job situation. It's, it's this. Okay, you, you give your all. There's a scripture that says that live your life unto him. The reason we give our all is it glorifies him. When we're people of excellence, when we go the extra mile, when we show the fruit of the spirit, even if it's not deserved, God sees. God sees and God promotes. God is your elevator. He's your harvester. He's the promoter. Okay, so number one, why do people not? Because of fear. Fear of being hurt. Fear of... Um, of uh, being walked out on, which is still hurt, just fear, fear of the what ifs, or what about if I show up and I'm the one that shows up for work and I do all the work and I don't get the bonus, or what, whatever the reasoning or now is fear. Okay, so at, so this is the thing to ask yourself on this action steps. Is there, first of all, is there an area in my life where I'm not giving my all, that I'm showing up, I've committed to this and I'm not giving my all. And look, the Lord, the Spirit will show you because he's trying to elevate you, okay? And a lot of times he gets your life in order and there's little things like, can I trust you with this before I elevate you to that? So it can be these simple little things because the word says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So are there any little foxes? Or it says lay aside those weights. So it talks about running that race strong. And it says lay, lay aside those weights that hold you back. Those little things that are like stuck on you. Take those off. Get those corrected. So are you showing up? First of all, is there an area you're not showing up? So that's what you want to ask yourself first. Is there an area that I've committed to? my marriage. Maybe it's something at, at, at work or maybe it's even something at your church or maybe you're working on a project and you've like let it sit on your desk. It could be anything but the practice of giving it your all. So that's number one. Is there an area? So there's a spirit. If there's a spirit of resistance in an area of your life, so maybe you're not necessarily fearful, but there's a resistance. You just kind of don't for whatever reason Look underneath that. What is the reason that that is serving me? Because re the spirit of resistance, that could be the very blockage that's keeping you from your promotion or keeping you from moving forward. Ask yourself, what is my resistance? Like, for example, nobody likes filling out their tax returns. Okay, that's a, who nobody does. But doesn't it feel good when you do it and you're like, oh, my God, I feel like I just like, I won the lottery or something when you've actually turned them in, you sign, it's all done. But, but so often we just kind of almost hate to like get that out and do it. And, but you still get a thumbs up on that. I know it's just that stuff you hate to do. So what is that resistance? Okay. Is it, I'm, I'm scared. I want to have some papers I need. Is it, is it because I don't want to waste my time? Is it because I'm scared of a little money? Go ahead and embrace what you're resisting because you're giving your power away. Don't give your power away. The spirit of resistance is a sign of showing that you're giving your power away. And all you have to do is address it. Look at it, address it, and like do like Nike. Just do it anyway. Whatever it is, 
fact, when I coach people, I tell them, if they say they don't want to do a certain thing or they just have, you know, I don't think I want to do that. I'm a little nervous, but I don't want, then I, that's the very thing I said. That's what you need to do. If you have a spirit of resistance on doing something, maybe it's you need to be kinder to somebody at the office. Maybe it's you need to um, show up and, you know, do some service work or whatever that is. And you've been resistant to it. Do it because it just starts unlocking the movement in your life. And then lastly, when you're trying to find out this information, so let's say you're trying to find out, am I fearful? Am I resistant? You know, what is it? What is the component that's keeping me from showing up all in? Get quiet and ask the Lord to reveal to you what areas of my life am I not showing up all in? And what is the reason? Because so often we can be in denial. We may, you may know it, but you could be in denial or you may not even see it. And it could be the very small, these very small things that you could fix just like that. And your life would be just like start moving forward in, in amazing ways. So um, thank y'all for watching. I see a lot of people online. Thank y'all. Bridget, two Bridgets. That's interesting. Denise, Scott, Kelly, Jim, Kirk, and Fred. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all leave me some comments on what we talked about. Um, if there's an area that you're not playing all in and you want to share it, share it because it's the act of confession that loses its power. Um, and, it, and really not playing all in y'all is a sin. Okay. We think sin is like just murder or just lying or just, you know, these horrible things. But sin is anything that doesn't line up with God, okay? So if you're not showing up all in to what you're committed to, because God says do everything unto him with all your might. So the act of confession, you confess the sin one to another so that you may be healed, okay? So just the act of saying, you know, I have been kind of missing the mark here. And if you don't do it, on, if you say, I'm not doing that online, that's fine. You can do this with a person. Because if you say it to a friend, it's just the voice of that. It loses its power. And just that makes the shift in the spirit for you to move forward. So I want to encourage you to, number one, ask yourself where I'm not playing all in. What have I committed to and I'm not showing up all in? And then ask yourself, am I, what am I scared of? Do I, what is this spirit of resistance about? You know, what's making me resist that? Sometimes that resistance is it's just working for us. It, it's working for our story. Let's say if you resist um, showing up on time at work because maybe you've had some people to like make little little jabs at you about how you never show up on time. And so you're showing them and you're not showing up. Well, you might be showing them, but you're hurting yourself. So that would be whenever, when I say it, that's working for you, for whatever your toxic story is, it's working for you. Or if you want to keep things the way they are, because it serves for you to be a martyr or a victim, or it serves for you to, to stay in that place of um, lack or resistance because of the fear to move forward, whatever it's about, but ask yourself, I'm talking about getting freedom and being elevated in life. Okay. Ask yourself, what is it? that the spirit of resistance is about. What is the fear about? And I just want to encourage you that whatever you've committed to, take the next step of being all in. So y'all have a great afternoon and I'm going to see y'all on Tuesday. Y'all leave me some comments and y'all share this if it's helped share um, to get that message out there. Thank y'all.